Hey everyone, this is Hans with Cure Home. Today we're gonna to go over 10 tips plus a bonus item for you as a new homeowner. So you're a new homeowner. We're gonna go through those 10 items on the list that you should take care of on a regular basis, at least once a year on all 10 of these items. Plus the bonus item, we're gonna get into it right now. So number one, your house is full of filters. You have a filter in your fridge, in your dishwasher likely, in your washing machine likely. If you have a humidifier on your furnace, that has a filter. If you have an air exchanger, that has a filter or multiple filters. So you have a lot of filters in your house that need to be cleaned or changed on a regular basis. So uh, be aware of that. Your fridge filter, we recommend changing that every six months. If you have a dishwasher filter, you should do that every couple months. Uh, you should be cleaning your dishwasher filter. Uh, your washing machine, if that has a filter, you should be cleaning that and draining the water out of that uh, at least once a quarter, uh, depending upon how much laundry that you're doing. Your humidifier on the furnace, you need to be changing that on a regular basis. We recommend that seasonally. So fall, winter, and spring, when that humidifier on the furnace should be on, in the summer, turn it off. And you don't need to change it in the summer when it's not on. Your air exchanger, if that has a filter, uh, if you have one of those, that has at least one, maybe two, if not three filters in there that need to be cleaned. We recommend doing that once a quarter so that that's working properly. So first item on the list, you have a lot of filters in your house. Some need to be cleaned, some need to be changed. Make sure you're aware of that and are maintaining all of those filters in your house on a regular basis. Number two on the list, probably goes without saying, a lot of people are aware of it, but clean your dryer vent. We would recommend doing that once a year um, by a professional dryer vent or an air duct cleaning company, somebody that's gonna come in and use the proper tools and professionally clean the entire line of your dryer, that entire exterior vent from the back of the dryer, the entire distance that it goes uh, out of your house. Get that cleaned once a year. It's a number one cause of house fires or one of the leading causes of house fires. It's also one of the most common issues people have with their dryers not working properly. Um, so sometimes people complain that it takes twice as long or maybe two full cycles to dry their clothes. That's often a clogged dryer vent issue. And then third, a lot of the new dryers now come with an auto shutoff feature. So if the dryer senses that the line is clogged, it'll shut off in the middle of a, in, in the middle of a cycle. It's a great safety feature to have. Very few people know that that even exists at this point. So. Um, Clean the dryer vent out once a year prevents and solves a lot of those common issues that, that people have with their dryers, and it's a huge safety hazard. Number three on the list, you wanna make sure you're cleaning your gutters. In the fall and in the spring is the best time to do it. If you had to pick one day as the target date, depending upon um, where you're living uh, across the world, but from where we are uh, recording this video right now, if you could pick one target date, it would be Halloween that would be the perfect day to clean your gutters. Um, but do it as, uh, as needed. So it could be once or twice a year. Uh, it depends upon your environment and how many trees and everything. But you wanna make sure that those gutters are clean so that the water is getting away from your house. And you wanna make sure that the downspout is connected and not clogged and getting that water at least four feet away from the exterior of your, of your home. So again, clean your gutters. Number four on the list, clean the interior of your washing machine. So we already mentioned you, if you have a front loader on your washing machine, you probably have a filter down at the bottom, but this is the interior of your washing machine, especially if you have a front loader. So once a quarter minimum, um, once every six months, you should be cleaning the interior of your washing machine to help with all those smells and, and all the gross buildup that happens on the inside of your washing machine. So we recommend using a cleaning product that's designed to clean the interior of your washing machine. Number two, clean the rubber gasket. Get all that gunk and whatever's hiding in that rubber gasket. Um, clean that out and then clean the soap tray. Again, you should be doing it once a quarter, minimum once every six months, is cleaning the interior of your washing machine. Number five on the list, you wanna change your smoke alarm batteries. We would strongly encourage you to do that on an annual basis. Number one, so that you don't get the 2 a.m. chirp. That's the number one thing that drives me nuts is waking up in the middle of the night to a chirp and you have to go change the smoke alarm battery. Um, so we would strongly encourage you to do that one time per year to prevent that annoying 2 a.m. chirp and also to make sure that those smoke alarm batteries are working. Number six on the list, 
buy yourself a minimum of one quality fire extinguisher. We would recommend that you have one fire extinguisher per floor in your house and one in the garage. So if you live in a two-story house, um, you have an upstairs and a downstairs, you should have, uh, our recommendation would be that you have one fire extinguisher on the main floor, one in the basement, and one in the garage. But you should have a minimum of one fire extinguisher in your house. You should be checking it regularly to make sure that it's in the acceptable pressure range and then replacing it as directed on the instructions, okay? We would not suggest that you buy the cheapest one that you can find, buy a higher quality one, and buy one that's rechargeable. Um, so go to your big box store or hop online and you can find those and have one in your house. And then lastly is teach yourself how to use it before there's a potential emergency. Um, when there's a fire or if there's a, ever a fire in your house, that is not the time to learn how to use a fire extinguisher. So take the time, hop online, and do some research on how to use your specific fire extinguisher. Number one, number two, check it on a regular basis and then replace it as directed on the instructions. And then the last thing to note about fire extinguishers is not all of them are created to fight every type of fire. Grease fires or electrical fires or just a standard fire that might be uh, on your sheetrock or, on, or in a fireplace. Those are different types of fires and there's different types of fire extinguishers for grease fires versus your more standard types of fire. So check the type that you're buying and make sure that you're buying one for the appropriate area that you could potentially be using that for. Number seven on the list, maybe not as widely known, but you should consider getting your air ducts clean. Why? Especially if you're in a little bit older home, you never know what's living in those in those air ducts from the previous homeowner or if they had pets or um, whatever it happens to be. All that gross dust and dander and pet hair and garbage that's in those air ducts is being circulated throughout your house. Um, so strongly encourage you to get your air ducts clean. Look for a reputable company and uh, get, get your dryer vent cleaned. A lot, of the air, a lot of times air duct cleaning companies will clean your dryer vent for free. So check and see if there's any specials available for that. But strongly encourage you to get your air ducts cleaned. We would recommend doing that every three to four years, every three to five years, uh, depending upon lifestyle and pets and kind of your environment uh, can um, make a difference on that. Allergies, those types of things. Uh, but do that on a regular basis as well. Number eight on the list, your water heater. What do you need to do there? drain the sediment out of that on a regular basis. We recommend doing it once a quarter at a minimum, maybe once every six months, but drain the sediment out of the water heater. It's not super complicated. You can check our YouTube channel um, for specific videos on how to drain the sediment out of your water heater. We're not talking about an entire tank flush. We're just talking about taking a couple, two, three gallons of water out of the bottom of the tank to get all that sediment build up out so that it doesn't corrode the inside of the tank any faster than what it uh, needs to. So um, drain the sediment out of the water here on a regular basis. Number nine on the list, cleaning your AC unit. This is gonna help your AC unit run more efficiently, especially in the hot summer months. That AC unit, you do not want it to look like it's wearing a sweater. If when you go out there and look at your AC unit, if it looks like it's wearing a sweater and it's ready for winter, you need to get your AC unit cleaned. The easy way um, to at least get it partially cleaned or mostly cleaned would be to use a hose and to get in there and really clean it off, spray off all of the, the cottonwood and dust and, and grass clippings and leaves, whatever's on there. Get all of that off there as best you can and use a garden hose on a high pressure setting. But the best way to do it is use an AC coil cleaner. It can be some pretty nasty stuff so be careful that you're not getting in your eyes or on your skin. Um, it shouldn't hurt your plants or, or any of your uh, shrubbery around your house. But clean your AC unit minimum once a year. Minimum use a garden hose. And we would really encourage you to use an AC coil cleaner that's designed to basically get melt all of that junk off of your AC unit so that it runs more efficiently. Number 10 on the list for things that you should do as a homeowner is cleaning your fridge coils. Why is that important? 
Uh, we want to help that fridge run as efficiently as possible. And we want it to last as long as it's supposed to. Cleaning the fridge coils um, will help your fridge run more efficiently. So dirty fridge coils can actually increase your utility bill. We've seen as much as 10 to $12 a month potentially to be added to your utility bill just by having dirty fridge coils. So very important that you get in there and clean the coils on your refrigerator. Where are they? Depends upon the style of fridge that you have. They can be on the bottom of the fridge, in the back, or on the top. And again, just depends upon the model and the style of fridge that you have. So we would recommend that you clean the fridge coils once a year to help your fridge run more efficiently and help it last as long as it's supposed to. And for the bonus item, when it comes to the changing of the seasons, specifically in the colder weather climates, you wanna turn the water off to your exterior faucets in the fall. How do you do that? You go into your utility room, find the different lines that go to each one of your different water, uh, the faucets on the exterior of your home. You wanna turn those off. Then you wanna go outside your house and open up those faucets and drain whatever uh, little bit of extra water is in those lines. So why is that important? Especially if you're in a little bit older home and if you're in a climate where it freezes and, and especially if it gets below zero, you wanna get the water out of those lines so that they don't freeze and crack and then potentially lead into uh, water damage situ situations in your house. So again, in the fall, turn off the water to your exterior faucets and open the, um, the faucet on the exterior of your house and drain that water out. That is your bonus tip um, for a, you as a new homeowner. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If there's anything we can do to help you, make sure you comment or reach out to us directly. We would love to help you maintain your house. And if there's any other um, specific videos that we can help you with, make sure you check out our YouTube channel or follow us on Instagram. We post a ton more content there.